Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about a book that I read some years ago that I think falls into this own little interesting subgenre of like YA drama, like really intense YA. So this book, Shattering Glass, I think the best way I can describe it simply is to call it a R-rated version of Mean Girls plus She's All That but gender flipped. So it's, it's, it's kind of interesting. It's, it's stuck with me for years and years and years. I read this book when I was pretty young and reread it a few times over the years. But even though I haven't revisited in a while, I still remember it to such like, to weird detail. It's a better detail than I remember some stuff I read months ago. So this is a really interesting thought in my opinion. So I wanted to talk to you all about it. So the entire premise of Shattering Glass is that there's this kid in school who is a nerd. He is, you know, the put upon kid, like his shoes aren't right and all that stuff. Like classic early 2000s, late 90s type of bullying type stuff, right? So he is, you know, put upon and all this kind of stuff. And then there's this group of cool kids. There's the, basically the mean girls, but it's like five dudes or something. And there's this one guy who's like short and skinny and just not the one that, you know, in that time, like everybody would assume will be the big dog on campus kind of thing. He's not some, you know, typical jock or anything like that, but he has this menacing power and his parents are rich and he just has like all this status. So he's like the king and all this stuff, right? So just as an experiment to show how much power they have over the school and over the student body, this group of guys basically says, let's take the lamest guy in school, the lamest, uh, you know, the lamest biggest loser and all this stuff and make him like homecoming king or make him most likely to succeed was their thing instead. So it felt almost like a deliberate subversion of that idea, because if they would have made him homecoming king, then it is a direct ripoff of a lot of those teen comedies. But in any case, they talk about making them most likely to succeed. So they go through the whole thing. They they take him under his wing. They start hanging out with him in public and stuff. They get him to work on his personality a little bit to be less shy and all this kind of stuff. But the interesting part of it is, is they thought they understood who they were dealing with. They thought they understood this meek little nerdy kid or whatever, and they would be able to push and pull and manipulate him. But they don't quite understand that he is smart and he has this... To me, it seems like early stage of sociopathy, a little bit of early sociopathy in there he has. But in reality, he is a true contemporary to the kid who is the leader of the bullies because he, um, his parents are like richer than anybody else's parents. He has all this stuff, like he can get anything he wants and all this stuff. So he has all this stuff that they flaunt, but he doesn't flaunt it because he doesn't really care about it. So he kind of understands that and he realizes what they're doing. And, you know, so he doesn't trust them from jump. So he basically plays his own games. And instead of, by the end, becoming most likely to succeed, he sets it up in a situation where he becomes class funniest, like class clown. Because that, <clears throat> because that was something that he wanted. That was something, you know, he wanted to do or whatever. And he wanted to subvert them and show them that they don't have the kind of control over him that they assume they did. But as a result of this, it gets to the point where it's basically r-rated so everything else is like from this description i've given probably sounds much like she's all that or um not another teen movie even or um like some mean girls type stuff right it's, it sounds like those kind of movies but the difference is where those stay pg-13 this gets really r so they end up having this situation towards the end full spoilers for the end of the book by the way full spoilers just full discussion just total spoilers but um so what ends up happening towards the end after he's announced his class funny is they basically have a meeting and they go into like a janitor's closet or whatever where they typically talk away from other students and stuff and they're in the gym and the gym equipment room and they're having a conversation and most of the guys have bats and he comes in there and they're having conversation blah 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 and he basically exposes all this stuff and he learned through his own connection some stuff that happened to the big guy like he was sexually abused and assaulted and stuff so he ends up using that against him and like using it to you know question his sexuality and stuff like that so that triggers him to the point of he takes the bat that he has and immediately goes after Simon Glass and then the other boys because more or less peer pressure and feeling obligated and he was talking smack to them too because he was helping with their grades and like he went into the computer and changed their grades and stuff like that so he actually had stuff over them so when he started basically fighting back and being the bully to them but he was in the terrible situation to do it because all of them had bats and he was basically defenseless by himself so they literally beat him to death with baseball bats in school and 
one kid, one of the kids in the group who felt bad about the whole thing, who was pretty much wanting to get out of it before it got to the level that it got to, he didn't participate, but he didn't stop it. So the rest of the book really is the fallout of all that kind of stuff. And it was so intense that it just, it basically taught me a severe lesson about bullying. Granted, I wasn't a bully and I got bullied way back when, but like the, it taught me like such this huge lesson about it. Like this idea, it taught me multiple lessons really, because I understood from glasses, from Simon glasses perspective, like they don't know me. They don't know who I am. They, you know, all this kind of stuff. And they're not just going to manipulate me. I'm going to manipulate them. Like I was very much vibing with that. I was all about that. And, um, this idea of the finding out like stuff about the bully, like, Oh, that is the direct, clear, understandable reason why this person is a bully and he behaves like this and all this stuff. So that kind of gave me perspective in that. So I don't see people that bully as just monolithic bad people or anything like that. I'll always go to like, damn, I wonder what makes you like that kind of thing. So like that book, this book's majorly influenced me in that way, but it also basically set me up to be the person I am in the sense that I don't like games. They were playing a game on him. He was playing a game on them. It didn't work out and it just blew up in a terrible way. So like that kind of like influenced me in that way too. And I think it's really interesting how, as I think about it more, I get older. A lot of these books that I read during the time in my life when I was very angsty, like it majorly influenced some of the things that I consider to be some of the better parts of my personality, some of my better traits. So I think it's really interesting. That's why I definitely recommend some of these old ones like Breathing Underwater, pretty much well, about half of Alex Flynn's bibliography, really, like a lot of the stuff she writes is is kind of intense from that perspective of those, you know, young years and stuff. So I just thought it was really interesting. I wanted to share it all, share it with you all today. So I definitely recommend Shattering Glass, even though I've told you the entire story. <laughs> but I think it's really interesting. It's a pretty quick read. It's probably only like three, four hundred pages or something like that. I can't remember, but it's really quick. So before we go ahead and wrap up, let me know in the comments down below, you know, got to feed that YouTube algorithm. Um, let me know if you've read any books from this subgenre, as I call it, that YA intense drama heavy genre, <laughs> you know? So let me know if you read anything. From so let me know about that in the comments down below. And as always, remember to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. And I will talk to you all next time. Peace.